Hi everybody, Prophet JJ here. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you amazing or what? <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you guys today on our program Remnant Rise. And with me today, I have two of the most amazing, greatest men of God that I know. Uh, Pastor Fabian Yurt and NJ West Nikki Jr. All the way from Johannesburg and Pastor Fabian all the way from, uh, what you call it again, from Mulnerton, Bobberg, wherever. From Olifant, Hook, where? <laughs> Just joking. He's all the way from St. City here in Cape Town. And we are about to do for you a beautiful program. God spoke to me a few months ago about putting a program together where we can have current conversations on what is happening in the body of Christ and in the world as a whole. And so today I have two great amazing of God. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you a little bit later on. But for now, I just want to say to you, thank you for coming. So let's just get the rules of the room. If you like something, give a like button. And if you really love something, give a love button. Also, we want you to like, we want you to comment, and we want you to share this broadcast with as much people as possible. Today we're going to speak about certain things that, that is definitely going to bless you. You're going to be empowered, you're going to be enlightened, and you're going to, the revelation of God is going to lift you out of wherever you are right now. You Remember, you are the remnant. What is the remnant? It is a survivor. It is a, it is a remainder. The remnant is also a supernatural breed. There's people of you that survived certain things. There's people of you that has went through a lot of stuff in life. But yet, you carry the scars, but you are here. That makes you part of the remnant. And today, without any further ado, I want to just let my brothers get into the room. So one, two, three. There we go. Let's see if it works. There we go. <laughs> let me unmute you guys. Hey. All right. Hey, with me today, hey, awesome. Let me just find another format. Awesome, awesome. We have, we, go. we have, we have, we have Pastor Fabian. Love you, my brother. How are you doing? Hey, Pastor <laughs> JJ. So good to hang out with you guys today. Thank you for having me on the awesome. show. Um, hopefully, people can be blessed. Amen. But the, but Pastor Fabian is all the way from Century City. They've got a beautiful church there called Planet Shakers SA. Uh, and yeah. then he's my friend. You know what? I, I met him once. We had a cup of coffee in uh, in Mug and Bean. And it was the greatest. I had a lot of meetings that day. And it was an amazing day. And I met him. <laughs> With us also is, is NJ West, Nicky Jr. Hey. Uh, hey, he hey, the son, he's the son of my spiritual father. Nicky, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Pastor Fabian, nice to meet and see you for the first time on facebook hey, so good to meet on on via via the social network but i've yeah. heard lots of great things about you nj and uh, thank you, such thank a privilege you. just to hang out such a privilege to yeah. hang out today yeah. really thank appreciate you. it it's gonna be good thank awesome. you awesome it's be super natural. awesome so today guys let's not uh let's not leave anything to to let the people get what they came here for you know what i feel like we're almost like in a boxing match we we ready for this thing. Ready? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. So family, what we're gonna chat about today is where is the church now? You know, we have we have experienced turmoil for the last few months. We have seen things that has we've never seen before. Yes, just yesterday I had a conversation with my with my wife about this thing, Pastor Fabian, and uh, and, and I said to her, I've never been part of a pandemic. I've never, I never know yeah. how to pastor. I never even know how to be a husband in a pandemic. Nothing. So we're going to chat about where are we now as the church? Where's the world now? What are we going to do? And then we're just going to flow uh, apart. So we're waiting on Nikki to, to, to join right now. But what we're going to do is we can, we can, we, we can start so long. So Pastor Fabian, yeah. according to you, where are we now? Where is the church now? Hey, uh, what a what a powerful question, you know, and I think a, a question that everybody would love to know. Um, and I, I will I will say, you know, I'll, I'll just state up front that again, um, I don't have all the answers. I don't have I don't, I don't and I don't want to presume to have all the answers. But I think I think the church is where God needs the church to be right now. Um, that's the best answer because ultimately. Um, 
I think that God has not forgotten the church in the midst of this pandemic, nor has this, nor has this pandemic, uh, is this pandem pandemic happening without God seeing this, uh, this coming on, 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 you know, on our radar. So the reality is, I think we are very well positioned. You know, the the uh, if you would look at church history, there's been there's been turmoil in every generation, centuries that the church has had to face, and the church has come out victorious. The church yes. has always marched out victorious, whatever the pandemic. And as you rightfully say, you know, we have we have not this we've never had to live through a pandemic of such a proportion. We've never had to. We've never had to lead children. We've never had to pastor. But isn't it amazing that just yeah. like Esther, that just like David, um, oh. that just like the man and the woman of faith, like Paul, to their generation, uh, they were yeah. found. They found themselves in some very difficult situations, and oh. it was it was the spirit of the Lord upon them that enabled yeah. them to be able to navigate those difficult times. So that's where I believe the church is. I, I believe the church is. Is at a is at a as a very at a very crucial time in history. Come on, come on, come on. You know what? The Lord spoke to me uh, a week ago, and He said to me, in fact, in the beginning of the pandemic, when we went just went into the lockdown, He said to me, JJ, I'm resetting some stuff. I'm resetting yeah. family. Uh, in fact, He gave me three things that is being reset right now. So I believe that although we are in a moment of of global proportions of global pandemic. God is using this thing to reset things in our lives. He's trying, he's using this moment to reset people in our lives. And he's yeah. using this moment also to reset places in our lives. And, and, yeah. and this was for me phenomenal. And so basically what he said to me, this is a global reset that is busy yeah. happening. And we might be asking ourselves, but why does he need to have a pandemic to start a global reset? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I truly believe that this thing that is happening, that has happened to us and that we are in right now is not from God. This is a Absolutely. plan of this is a plan of the enemy. But just like in the life of Job, God is using this specific thing yes. to let yeah. us to let us grow. And this is not a this is not a prison cell, but this yeah. is a womb. I yeah. wanted us to connect with us a little yeah. bit more about this. Yeah. Uh, is this a this for me, this is a womb. This is not a prison cell. That's right. You know, and 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 it's so powerful. Yeah, we got Nikki back. Nikki is back. Yeah, back. Sorry now, about that. Yeah, Nikki. Now this conversation can be holy because you are right in there. You see. Now this. <laughs> 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 and you. So I. I think you know the reality is, of course, uh, as you say, I hundred percent agree that this is a God. This is not. This can be God used, but it's not God sent. This is not from God. This is not God's heart. God's heart is not for people uh, to die. The Bible says clearly that the enemy comes to kill, comes to steal, and comes to destroy. That's what the enemy comes to do, not God. And so, but yet in the midst of this challenge, we do understand that as Romans 8 says, that God can work things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so in the midst Amen. of this, this becomes that valley of the shadow of death, yet yes. I will fear no evil situation that we have to yes. march ourselves through. This becomes that David versus Goliath situation where we say, um, we come against you in the name of the Lord our God, because the very thing that is raging against our homes, our churches, our our finances, our our our, our lives, you know, this is the very thing, and that's that's the enemy that has come in to to seek to destroy. But we come up against this thing in the name of the Lord our God. So this is that proverbial womb moment where we where we get to where we get to draw some strength and nourishment, where we get to go into our yes. faith and believe that yes. our God is able to bring us through on the other side. Amen. Nikki, just to get to, 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 to bring you up to speed of where we are right now, we're asking the question, where, e, where are we now after, after the whole pandemic, after the whole COVID-19 thing, and especially where is the church right now? And then we basically said, we believe that this is a womb moment, not a prison moment. God is busy yeah. creating. In a womb, some stuff is being created. Fingers are created. New creativity, new thinking patterns, new eyes. Everything is being, there's a recreation, a reset moment busy happening. So I just want you to, to, to connect with us on that. And what is your point on that? Yeah. Um, first of all, can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. Loud and clear. Yes. 
loud and clear. Okay. Awesome. Clear. Um, I agree with um, the whole thing that this is the, the woo moment for the church, definitely. Um, I also think it's such a, a pivotal point for the church to make certain decisions and for us to, to act on certain things. So first of all, I'm so glad that the government has said that we are essential. And um, I, I saw that Pastor Ad Boschoff was saying that it was the youth that were fighting for it. You know, they yes. were the ones fighting for that case. You know, that the yeah. church, the front line, that church, church workers must be essential. So I'm so glad that we as a church are standing up. I've been thinking a lot about um, the, the guys in the book of Acts, you know, how they would have acted in today's time. You know, would they, what would they have done? What would they have said? You know, with the, I think the preaching would have intensified. I yeah, wouldn't have come on. Yeah. Yeah. But on the, yeah. on the yeah. other hand, you know, I, I do agree that um, God is using social media right now to impact more people than we've ever, than we've ever impacted wow. before. We are reaching people yeah. that never fitted into our buildings. We're reaching people come that on. would have never come to our physical church, but they, they're yeah. watching on live stream. So I do think that it's a great moment for evangelism. It's a great moment to, to get in the harvest that we've been praying for, to start a revival. Um, I saw this one point that I will, I will leave this conversation with today is that um, the devil thought that he took churches out of the world, but God actually started a church in every home, if you think yeah. about Come it. On. You know, Come on. He won by taking churches out, but God actually yeah. put churches in every home. And I think we, we've been awakened as a church that it's, it was never a building. It was always the people. Yeah. You know, Jesus yeah. never built a building. He yeah, never yeah. had a building. Apostle Paul yeah. never had a building. They were going yeah. from house to house, from city to city, getting the message of the gospel out there. And I think that's maybe yeah. what God is wanting us to do is to stop with our, you know, and I, I have nothing against church. I love church, but stop with this thing that uh -huh. I only have church on Sundays and we, we can't mm -hmm. wait for the conference, the next speaker. And now it's all been taken away. You know, it's all yeah, kind of yeah. been taken away from us. And we have to get back to the basics, which is preaching the gospel where you are, using your platform, yeah. using your influence, and doing it house to house, city to city, having conversations mm -hmm. with people, sitting down with people, dining with people, talking about Jesus. And I think that's just getting back to the fundamentals of what the church really is. Mm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Something, guys, that 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 Nikki, that you said right now is that social media. Uh, many people just think social media was a toy that we can play with, etc., etc., etc. But one of the points that I want us to talk about today is the following: Is social media a move from God right now? L let me just give you a backdrop of this. A few weeks ago, I was sitting on a Sunday morning. And I was looking at all the churches on Facebook, boom, 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 boom. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Facebook has become the biggest mega, 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 mega church right now. So I yeah. want to ask you the question. I'm going to start with Pastor Fabian. Pastor Fabian, do you think social media is a move of God right now? And if you're not on social media, are you, are you, are you, will you become irrelevant as a minister of the gospel or what? Look, I think I think Facebook uh, and social media platforms um, have a, an incredible amount of power that, as we see right now, that the church has been able to tap in um, by the grace of God. By the grace of God, it's allowed us as long as well as technology. Um, you know, that's why the church the church is never is never the, the church is not just one dimensional. Yeah. Um, part of the challenge is, is that the church has always been the messaging that the world has received about the church is that the church is just about a Sunday uh, Sunday service. But there's yeah. more to the church. And so ultimately, yeah. when you look at what technology has uh, enabled, and by the way, the church, um, I know of uh, uh, your, your guys' move, uh, and, you know, our movement, you know, we've always been in the techno technology space where we are in the yeah. social media space. And so the reality yes. is, is these are things that God has given us to be able to reach more people. And so, yes, I believe that there is that there is that there is a, a concerted move of God that allows us um, to be able to touch more people through this medium. 
yes. to be able to yes. uh, inspire and bring about the, the power of the Holy Spirit into homes that we yeah. would not ordinarily yeah. have been able to do. However, I think the reality is um, uh, technology cannot, cannot substitute relationship. Um, yes. And on. so I think that's, that's one of the things that I've been very clear with the people around me. I say, I celebrate what God is doing in terms of our reach and in terms of the platforms, you know, to Sunday, I'm going to be preaching to two different, to two, I'm going to be preaching at our local church and technology has allowed me to be able to preach to another completely different church. So I celebrate yes. that. However, there is no substitute for what the bride of Christ represents, which is touch, wow. which is family, which is community, which is, you know, yes. for me as a pastor, what, what gives me great joy is when that child comes and there, there's a newborn yes. child in a, in a church, I get to pick them up, I yes. get to hug them, I get to shake somebody's hand, you know, and I think yes. those are the things. So, uh, I, again, it's not either or, it's both and. It's celebrating that God is. God can use it all. God can use yeah. whatever we bring. God can use it. The, the yeah. more the empty, the yeah. more empty jars we bring, the more the miracle can multiply. And I think where yeah. we, where church has historically, where, and I'm not talking about a particular church. I'm talking about church as a global move. Where what we have yeah. often tried to do is, is we try to confine the move of God to one thing. Yeah. Yes. But the move of God can yeah. be multiple things. God could yeah. use. You know, uh, if you could, if you could use uh, uh, the the jawbone of a donkey in 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 Samson Samson's hand, yes. and he can speak to a donkey. You know, the reality is, God. If we can bring it to God, He will use it. So, because ultimately, He wants to touch the world. I like yeah. that, Nikki. Wow. Nikki, this is your space. I know you love you love creativity. You love social media. Get, I want you to give us a technical and. Before we go further, give us first your take on it. And also, how can we as the church honor this thing so that it can become a weapon in our hands and not mm. just a little toy? You know, how can we use this thing? Because of your immense knowledge on the specific topic, I want you to first give your take on it. But also, how can we harness this little, this big thing and make it a weapon for the church? Well, um, I firstly want to agree with Pastor Fabian there. Um, that, you know, as a young person as well, nothing ever substitutes relationship. Um, no wow. social media video content, nothing has ever substituted that physical touch from your, your family at church, you know. So mm -hmm. I do think that God is using that. Um, and that definitely, um, that was definitely a move of God. And now I think there's, there's kind of a, not a transition, but a collaboration of mm -hmm. the two, you yeah. know, that... Um, Maybe there are some pastors and leaders that were that were awakened to the fact that they were not reaching people online, and that yeah. this mm -hmm. right pulled that out of them to say, okay, we're missing out on on this this whole experience that we can do online. Yeah. And then I think there were other pastors that were awakened to the fact that they don't have relationship; they've only been online, and mm -hmm. now yes. the people don't feel connected because uh, they have never actually build relationship because there, there was no physical connection between them and the people, only online videos. So it's a bit yeah. more difficult to connect. So I think that there's been an yeah. awakening of both and that after this, we have to stay collaborated with online church and our physical gatherings that we are yeah. going to gather physically, but we are also going to invest into the online church because there's people that cannot get you. There's people That's that right. need to be, you know, Maybe maybe the physical church will be for the people that are more hurt um, emotionally, that or maybe people that cannot afford smart device. Yes, yes, and you know what? There's sometimes the people that can have these devices should use them. You know, so that's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Like where the church is going, the people that have access to these platforms should use them to the best of their ability. And invest into it. Like what you're doing now is amazing. It's brilliant. And more yeah. of these things need to surface. More of these yeah. things need to come up. Where people can yeah. speak to each other like this. Minister from platforms like this. And, and show the church that God is not limited to one building. On one day. Absolutely. On Sunday. He's, Absolutely. He can do it every day. On any platform. It doesn't matter which one you use. You know. So that's, that's, that's my right. thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now. Turn this. You want to say something, Fabian? 
Uh, no, I just, I was just, uh, I was just, all, just about, uh, just about to stand up and amen, NJ there, just to go. You know, this is <laughs> it's, it's powerful because, because I think we have to, you know, the church, the church is is, is enduring. The church has persevered and it will continue to persevere. Yeah. Um, but the church is also we are tra we are traversing we are traversing paths at the moment that might be unknown to us, but. God has brought the creatives uh, or the creativity to us. You know, we the church has never been the church has never lacked creativity. It is just that yeah. we have always boxed the creativity. We have always, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why it's hard for the world to see the church as more than just a Sunday attendance. You know, so in the area of humanitarian aid, the church has been there for for centuries. In the yeah. area yeah. of education i mean the you know the missions church the mission schools that have been set up the church has always been in those spaces in the area of creativity the church has 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 we've, what we've done in the area of creativity we've left it in the hands of hollywood or uh exactly. these big production houses but we've got to we've got to redeem that for the church we've got to redeem on. that that it's we don't we don't just uh, isolate or confine god to a particular area and space in my ministry and in, in, in you know the ministry that I get to be a part of, thank God, you know our our senior pastors has always believed that giving young people the expression to be able to outwork out of them what God has breathed inside of them, you know, in terms of the creativity, social media, the Hello. dance, the, the music, the videos, the and and the because again our audience is so diverse. Our audience will always be diverse. And there's a generation of young men and women, and not only young men and women, but there's a generation of people that God wants to speak through using media. And so if we are not there, we don't have we, we don't have the opportunity to influence the people who desperately need us to influence them. Prophet JJ, can I maybe add one more thing in there? Um, I would like to add this is that um, social media, if it wasn't for social media, the church wouldn't exist. If, oh. if if the disciples, <laughs> if the disciples and the people that wrote the Bible didn't do social media by yeah. writing in those yeah. days, <laughs> if they didn't capture the testimonies, then we wouldn't have a Bible. So mm, people that are against social media, you're essentially against capturing the move of God because that's exactly what it is, is Absolutely. capturing what's happening and putting it out there for people to see, for people to experience. Because yes. if you just want your family to experience it, then don't record something. Don't do something online. That's fine. But if yes. you want the world to be a part of it, this live stream is going to reach a couple of hundred people. And that's how you yes. touch people because someone's going to share this. The new form of evangelism is clicking a share button. It's never that's been right. easy for someone to evangelize right. to somebody. And it's sharing it with people, sharing it on your WhatsApp status. So the church is evolving, I think, if that's the right word to use, is that we're yeah, not going yeah. backwards and that's we're not right. being persecuted. We are actually evolving. We're becoming better. Yeah. We're becoming more proactive in, in our action to what we need to do. I mean, look at how many people are being fed right now through the church. We're mm, doing, wow. with all due respect, I mean, we're doing more than the government. The church is doing more Come than on. the government in South Africa. Come on. Feeding people. Come on. So we're going back to the basics of feeding the people naturally and spiritually. And I think that's maybe yeah. what God wanted for us to do in this lockdown is just getting back to the basics of why we are the church and why we started a church in the first place. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, guys, you know, guys this is what the Lord said to me. He said to me that he is busy creating right now in this moment, in this space, in this time capsule that we are in right now. He's creating... Uh, once again, salt and light. You know, the enemy stole from the church yeah. the technology of influence. You know, I was watching this one uh, Instagram influencer, and this guy doesn't know, he's not a believer, probably nothing. And we I, I don't want to go into that thing, but what I saw is the power of influence. And the Come Lord on. said to me, what was stolen from us as the church, the technology, the spiritual technology of influence, He's busy putting it back again. So oh, once hmm. again, we will become, we, we will be influencers. And, and, yeah. and I want to say this. I want to say this, that That's some true. guys in this moment right now are going to transcend just being pastors, just being apostles. Yeah. We need to go to the yeah. space where we really become influencers.
because an influencer yes. can, 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 re, can review this cup That's and right. can say, ah, oh, that is a beautiful cup, go and buy it. And then yeah. basically they will buy the cup because the mm. influencer influenced exactly. you. That's right. I think, I think at the moment right now, God is busy shifting that thing again and giving us total dominion of influencing capacity. And, and, yeah. and this is what the church has lacked for years because of the following statement. And we're going to jump to this one now. I'm going to ask you this question. Is the church still relevant? You know, is the church still relevant? I'm asking you this question because I want to grow from, go from this to another position. You guys, yeah. all of you, you, both of you guys had beautiful stuff now to say, but I'm going to ask before we go further. Do you believe the church is still relevant in the modern 21st century? Anyone? Uh NJ, you can go first. <laughs> well, I want to say, if you, if you planet shakers, you're definitely relevant, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most relevant church I know, man. That's the most relevant church. I love that church, Pastor Fabian. Oh, man. Uh, thanks, so NJ. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think um, if you speak about the church in general, um, I, don't, I don't know if the whole church is maybe relevant. I think the message of... Of just, the, stop the, there, just stop there, just stop there. You touch, just stop there, Nikki. You, you touched on something. You said some of the church is relevant. <laughs> now you yeah. need to explain to us what do you mean some of the church is relevant and some is not relevant. What do you mean? Well, I, I, think, I think, first of all, let me say this, that I think the, the church's message is relevant. You know, the gospel will always be relevant no matter what. But I think the methods of some churches... They they old school. They've lost their touch. They they're losing attendances. They're losing people. People are going to and let's say this planet shakers, hill song, elevation, big churches because they they have evolved. They have grown, um, and and that's I think where some churches are missing it. They might be stuck in something that God used to do, and that's why they're irrelevant because they're not seeing what God is doing now, and they don't want to jump in the river. They want to be in the in the lake. Where everything is just the same. They don't want to flow with God. So I think that some parts of the church are at a place where they need to make a decision. Are we going to change? And are we going to become relevant? Relevant meaning, do you have social media platform? Do you have young people in your church? Do you have young leaders mm -hmm. in your church? Those kind of things. If everyone yeah. is over the age of 40 in your church and all the leaders are 60 years old, you know, when, when that senior pastor dies, the whole church is going to die. And I don't think that's the plan of God. Even Jesus at the age of 33 gave his whole ministry over to 12 guys. because he And he was young, man. He was young. 33 yeah. years old, he decided, okay, I'm done. I've done enough. I'm giving it over. And I think maybe there's some pastors holding on to authority and power and not realizing that it's a good thing to give it away. And to empower yeah. the next generation to to show, okay, how can we become relevant? But the message will always be relevant, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, oh, a great, absolutely powerful, you know. And I think the reality is, is you know, I, 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 you know, I love the I love the body. When we talk about the church, I talk we talk about the body of Christ, yeah. uh, the yeah. bride of Christ, you know. And as the bride of Christ, I believe, um, and, and very much in line with what NJ has said, I believe that I believe that the words of the Lord to us in the New Testament that, you know, um, upon this rock I will build my church, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. I believe that the church, in terms of the heart of God, the bride of Christ, is an enduring church. It always has and it always will. However, I think in terms of in terms of um, the church within keeping up with, with where we are at, church leadership or church, you know, uh, our, our senior pastor always talks to us about the fact that, um, you know, Planet Shakers is built on two foundations. We're both old school and we're new school. Um, mm -hmm. We're new school in the sense that um, we speak the language of the day. We don't, we don't, we don't speak another language. We speak the language of the day. However, when you, when you, we don't do it without the word of God, that the word of God is still powerful. The word of God is still powerful to bring healing and to bring everything that Jesus has commanded in his word and the word of the Lord still remains. And so all we try and do is to bring both together. Um, so in terms of the packaging to the world, so as NJ has said, 
instead of instead of uh, following behind in terms of where where life is going we have decided that we're going to keep up moving in fact not only keep up with it but we want to innovate in that space we wow. want to be able to present the church as Christ has called us to present the church glorious wow. radiant powerful passionate um, a church that is appealing not only to uh, as a, a, across the generations. And how do we do that? It means that we have to be the church that keeps its finger on the pulse of what Holy Spirit is actually saying, but also keep our finger on the pulse of where society is going in terms of uh, not not uh, not speaking the language of society in the church. That's not what we're talking about. But it's yeah. being able to to package our churches in a way that it's not stuck in the in the in the in in, in the past but it's actually a product of where we are going in our future yeah can i just add this uh, for you guys that are watching us right now when we say the church because some some people are, are in the middle right now they don't understand they think the church is just the building they think the church is this that corporate grouping every sunday or when we have church meetings what we are talking about, and I do believe you guys agree with me, you guys that are watching me, I say Amanda is watching me, I say Blanche is watching me, I say Refiwe is watching me, all of these guys that are believers that is watching me, you must understand that you are the church, you are the temple mm -hmm. of God. When you say that we need to become relevant, it means that we as individuals ourselves need to become relevant to a greater, to, to, the, to, to those ones that we want to influence and want to attract. Right. Don't That's get right. us wrong. We love we love the believers. We love coming together. But we, uh, when I ask the relevancy of the church, I mean, are we still relevant? Is what we say connecting yeah. with people and bringing them to the love and to the grace of God, to the mercy of God, and to the supernatural power of God? If the people look at us to represent God's supernatural power, do we yeah. do we as the church, the ecclesia, are relevant? Are hip? Are connected? Look like Pastor Fabian is looking right now with his cap and stuff and everything. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Can we pull in those? And, and upon that, before we're going to go to the next question, upon that, now I'm going to ask you, how are we going to make ourselves more relevant as the church? Any one of you? Well, um, if I can maybe add Pastor uh, JJ to that, it's like, if you look at every time Jesus spoke to people, he used parables and he always explained it in a way that they understood. So exactly what Pastor Fabian said, if you can speak the language of the day and get to the people's level of understanding and not try to be so what, uh, doctrinally correct and mm. high in your education of the Bible, and Jesus never dropped those bars on people like, like it was just, oh, I, I come from this Pharisee school. No, he came mm -hmm. with the, the perspective of, um, I know what you're going through. I am also a human. And this is the, the parable that I can leave with you today. And yeah. take the revelation from this. So with how you stay relevant is more in the fact of how you say what you say to me. Uh, people are listening to great big preachers because they're communicating the message the right way. They're saying mm. the same thing somebody else is saying. The doctrine is correct. It's sound. It's perfect. But they are connecting with the hearts of people. And I think you become irrelevant as a preacher and as a church when you think you are above the people and you're preaching mm. from the place of I am, I am above you or better than you, and I'm going to speak down to you, much like the Pharisees did in the days of Jesus. Jesus yeah. came with a perspective. I'm going to speak to you from, you know, eye to eye, level to level, you know, and mm -hmm. I know where you are. I know where you are. If we can, as preachers, communicate that, not try to be these amazing guys without communication, but keep it simple. If you look at what Apostle Paul said, Apostle Paul said, I didn't come with, I didn't come with, um, Beautiful words. Yeah. But I came with the power of God. And that's yeah. the only thing that can keep you relevant, really, is the power of God in this time. Um, what's right. gonna impress what's gonna impress a, a sick person? Healing. What's gonna yeah. impress a poor person? Wealth, money, showing them, hey, mm. giving a poor person money, say, let me educate you, let me help you. So you need to see where is the power of God needed to manifest in your oh, church yeah. to manifest in your yeah. that's how you're gonna stay relevant in your church. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just, just mm-hmm. jumping on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just, just tagging on to what NJ was saying. How does, how does KFC stay relevant? How does McDonald's, uh, McDonald's stay relevant? Well, they stop being relevant when they stop producing the chicken. If KFC has no chicken, then it stops being relevant because then the yeah. people that want KFC, they keep coming and you keep telling me I don't have chicken. Uh, McDonald's, you come and your burgers, you you know, there's no burgers. So ultimately, I think we become irrelevant yeah. when people need something from us, but they wow. can't find what they need from us. Mm. So when they come to when they come, so we don't, and we don't make it about a style. We don't make it about a preference. You know, uh, wow. we make it about we make it about the fact that is Jesus Christ the hope of the world? And if He comes to our come building, or if He comes, or if He meets us as the church as individuals, do people walk away hopeful? Do people walk away going, or, or are they getting so confused by what we've just spoken? Because we've spoken in another language, we spoke church language to people, and people are going. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. And you have to be yeah. a part of us to actually understand what we're saying. Well, you know, well, um, yeah. you we, we're dressed in a way that the world don't understand. You know, people often come up to me and they say to me, well, hey, what do you do? You know, and I say, uh, uh, I'm a pastor. I, I And they, they normally <laughs> do a take two. They're like, yeah, I promise you. They always say to me, no, it can't be. I said, why not? They said, because you don't look like a pastor. I said, what does a pastor look like? Because people have a paradigm. People have a paradigm of yes. what pastors should look like, yes. how they must walk and how they must talk. And and, I, and yes. I've decided, uh, you know, and, and thank God I'm part of a, I'm part of a, an apostolic covering that we've just decided that we are going to, we are going to be who we are based upon the word of God. Because the word of God doesn't restrict. It releases us to be who yes. God, God called us to be. So I don't have to be anything outside of who I am. And whoever I connect with, people and normally are interested. They say, you're a pastor. Are you for real? Are you like working with the youth? I'm like, no, I pastor the whole church. And they go like, what, what do you mean the whole church? And, you know, and they're like, do you... I said, well, what you see me dress like now, that's how we dress on a Sunday. You know, that's a, and you know, are there old people? Are there older? Uh, yes, I am a pastor to, you know, 80 year olds as I, as much as I'm a pastor to the 16 year old. Because it's, it's about, the, the, the reality is, is can we meet people's needs? Can I love people? Because mm. I can have the hat on, but not love people. I can love social media more than I love the people. You know, I can yeah. have, I can have a big Bible under my arm, but love love the, the pastors for turtles more than I actually love my congregation uh, because it makes me look more important. In the end of the day, yeah. what makes me a pastor is not my dress code. What makes me, what makes the church powerful is not the fact that we have LED lights. What makes the church wow. powerful is the fact that we can meet people's needs. Mm-hmm. Are they hungry? Yeah. Are they hurting? Are they lost? Are they broken? Do they need prayer? Do they need somebody to tell them, I'm proud of you. I believe in you. I'll yeah. pray with you. And actually pray yeah. with them, you know. That's the power of the bride of Christ, and Come that on. she can be she can be gathered and she can be scattered, and she can still Come be on. powerful. Yeah, you know, yeah. she does not just she doesn't just function on the premise of one basis alone. Yes, everybody Sorry, watching I'm me, I think away. Pastor Fabian, no, 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 it's fine. I think Pastor Fabian needs some love buttons. So on the count of three, one, two, three, give some love buttons, give them love buttons. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let us quickly just do that. I love what you just said. I really love what, what you just said. What I understand then is for us as the church to be relevant, this is what the Lord said to me. We need to become contemporary communicators. Contemporary communicators. For too long, we have been clogged up and locked up in situations and in, and in a time zone that the, that the people are not in. We need to become the contemporary communicators. What I love about both of you guys, and therefore why I wanted you guys to be on this program today, is because there is no frills to the message and to the way that you present your message to the people. I always said it when I connect with, or the first time I connected with Nikki, with, with Inja, I said, I love the way you communicate. And this is what God wants for today, is for us as the church, especially pastors, you guys that are watching us today, there's a few pastors watching. God wants you to be a contemporary communicator. You know, sometimes we clock the communication line so much with all our uh, unnecessary religiosity. Come on. <laughs> we are so mm. religious. 
Whilst you don't have to be that. If a person needs yeah. some food, give the person food. If the person needs mm. a hug, just give him a hug. Stop telling the person the way that you look. Just become a contemporary communicator of the word of God and of life. You know, people want to be loved. Wow. People want yeah. to be cared for. People want to be, people want to be, they want you to be there for them as a pastor. So with this being said, God spoke to me and God said to me, the people that will be in the forefront of making the church relevant in the now will be the remnant. Now, I want to ask both of you guys, what do you see and what do you perceive to be the remnant? I think for me, um, Prophet JJ, the remnant, um, like dad, like my dad has taught us, is um, the people that have survived the catastrophe. The people that are the remainders, the people that are, are left, the, the, the people that have been uh, left over from a massive storm. Those are the people that have survived and that have kept their faith in God in the storm. And we are finding ourselves in a storm and we have had people shout in our services, I'm the remnant, I'm the survivor, you know, and now you're in the crisis and where are those people? Where are those same people that shouted in church, Amen. And then now, where, where's the remnant? The remnant's supposed to be arising. The remainders, yeah. the, the residue, the people yeah. that survived, that went through the storm, where are they now? And I think now is the time for people, the children of God, to stand up and say, listen, we're going to be the light, that we're going to be the salt, we're going to be the truth, you know, for, for people to mm-hmm. see that you are a Christian in this time. Now more than ever, it's yes. important to, to see, okay, that person is a light in my life. Maybe somebody else lost their job and you're a Christian and you got promoted. They're going to try figure out in their minds how in the world did that happen. That's because you are a remnant. And that you need to share that now with those people. Because now God is giving us opportunities with promotion to, to share the light of the world with them. But I, I don't know if I'm seeing it very often, Prophet JJ. And I think that's maybe the yeah. call today to people is to be awakened to the fact that you need to share the, the goodness of God now more than ever. People might have yeah. a facade on and a mask on, you know, like an emotional mask. And to say, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I'm okay. But when you really have a conversation with them, they're not okay. They're not. Mm-hmm. They've mm-hmm. lost mm-hmm. a lot in this time. And it's time for the church, the remnant, to arise and be that light for the people, that love for the people now more than ever. Yeah. Yes, Pastor Fabian. Absolutely. Your I, I think I think it is it is a generation of men and women who yes. have set their minds on uh, who have fixed their eyes on Jesus Christ, who is the author and the perfecter of their faith, regardless of circumstances, because we have lived through some things. Regardless of situations, because we are, we have a revelation that doesn't make us conditional, but it makes us positional. Um, it's a yeah. generation of believers, of men and women who, who I believe God has spoken to me that would be like a David that was not Come even on. meant to be on the battlefield, but because of his faithfulness yeah. in the private place, yeah. because they, he, he had survived the lion, because mm. he had survived the bear. God said, "Now, yeah. my son." Even though everybody is Come inactive on. on the battlefield, I'm gonna need to bring you. I'm gonna need. I'm, I'm gonna need you to deliver some sandwiches because if I can Come get on. you within earshot of what the enemy is saying, I know that you won't back down because Come you on. have mm-hmm. seen me faithful when nobody saw me faithful. You have seen me do yeah. things when nobody else saw me do things. You see, sometimes we live in a generation, and and and, and this is the downside of sometimes being such a public generation, is the fact that we can only celebrate that which is public. You know, the the, yeah. the more like, the more this and the more that. But sometimes God takes you down like David in the private place where you yeah. have to fight some battles because there comes a time where you have to face up to your Goliath. That is that generation yeah. of believers. I believe that God is calling for men and women who are not going to be intimidated. Men and women mm-hmm. who shout louder in their actions than they do in their words. Men and women who are going to stand yeah. with the word of truth in the one hand, but they're also going to stand and they're going to believe God that they are going to be able to push through no matter what comes my way. You see, I believe that that wow. that the day wow. I gave my life to Jesus, you know, I, 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 we've seen so many things happen through our lives. You know, my my daughter fell into a pool. She drowned. She was she was practically dead for for for, for more than 45 minutes. So we lived through that. 
And the only thing that could sustain us through that moment was to call upon the name that it was, was above every other name. Oh. My cap couldn't help me. My my skinny jeans couldn't help me. My my oh. my, my, my my Dolce and Gabbana, my boss could not help me. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth could help oh. me in that moment. You see, so yes. so sometimes I think people can sometimes people judge you on the outward, the external appearance, and they don't see that really what makes that what makes us the remnant, the ones that are that have is because we have lived through some things and we have seen the Come faithfulness on. of God bring us yeah. through. We have gone from not having, you know, to from you know my wife and my two, my wife and my my eldest son sleeping in an empty house with no with no food with no furniture, and we had to call upon the name that is above every other name. So I believe God is calling a generation of men and women away from the comforts yes. of our faith into the deep, where we get to see things that we've never seen before. We, we can't just talk about generations that have gone before us. They have yes. done a great wow. job. They have, well, we stand on the shoulders of the of the great men and women of faith, the, the Billy Grahams. We stand on the shoulders of the men of the Rabbi Zacharias. We stand on the shoulders of men and women like, you know, like uh, uh, the great, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the great man of God who's just passed on. Um, uh, Raina uh, Bonke. that's it. The great man and woman. But right. here's the thing. Now it's our time. Yeah. Now it's yeah. our time. Yeah. Yeah, we can't yeah, keep talking about what has happened because that's where religion Come sets on. in. We talk about the good old days. Oh, yeah. back in the day. No, 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 no. Now we've got to create a future based on where we are at now. Now yeah. we have Come got on. to lay a hold of it. So so if there's anybody out there right now, I want to encourage them. Come this on. is our opportunity. It doesn't matter. You see, yeah. it doesn't matter how you get to the battlefield. When you're on the battlefield, it doesn't matter what brands we carry. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't yeah. matter what house you live in. What matters is, David said, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord, our oh, God. And, oh, and, and it's that Lord. name that, that brings us through. So ultimately, that's the, that's what makes us, those men and women that are able to push through. There might not be many. There might only be a few. But here's the thing. Can you hold on to Jesus regardless mm. of what you come find on. yourself in? Come on. Come on. So right come now, I feel it's, appropriate. it's the appropriate time. I want you guys that are watching us, I want you guys to get yourself ready. Pastor Fabian, Nikki, I want us to pray for the people right now. Yes. I know you guys still have a lot to say, but I want us to pray for the people. Okay. You know, because I believe that many of the people that is watching us right now here, they they don't they are the remnant. They've gone through some stuff. They've experienced life. They are carrying the scars. There are people that is watching us right now that are sitting with nothing in their houses. But there is also people that is on the other scope of things that might not be very happy. That is that the husband they've got everything in their house, but but mm. no love, nothing. Mm. They are also part of the remnant. So we don't say that the remnant is just a certain grouping, a certain yeah. demographic. The remnant is anyone that has experienced yeah. life in its most terminal states, that has experienced oceans of deep the, the darkness and things. You are part of this remnant, but you've made it. You have survived. Yeah. You have remained. And God is going to use you as a supernatural breed. So right now, I want you guys to pray. Whatever God lays in your heart, pray for the people. Release a prophetic word in the people. And just pray, Nikki, uh, Fabian, just pray and bless the people, those that are watching us right now and going to watch us. So I'm mm -hmm. leaving it, I'll give it over to you guys. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Awesome. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Yeah. We give you glory. And we honor you, mighty God. We thank you that yeah. yours is the power. Yeah. Yours is the kingdom, yeah. the power, and the glory. Yeah. And so yeah. right now, we release we release the anointing of God to come yeah. into yeah. homes, to come into lives, to come yeah. into minds and hearts that will bring about yeah. a liberty of freedom. I, I pray, yeah. Father, right now where people are finding themselves limited by fear, limited by, by what is going on around them. Lord, yeah. I pray that they will turn their eyes upon Jesus. Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Right now, I pray for a release of courage, for a release of confidence, for a release of the word to come. You know, Father, even as the word of Jeremiah declares that your word is like fire, shut up in my bones. Even if yeah. I try to keep quiet, that word must come out. So we pray right now, mm -hmm. let there be a fire released wow. upon your people. Let the people, Jesus, wherever they find themselves, in their lounge room, in their bedroom, in their yeah. car, wherever they find themselves, right 
right now as they're listening to this, Lord, we pray that there will be a release of the hand of God to shake everything loose that has been stuck for so long, to begin to touch men and women who have found themselves confused and conflicted. I pray right now in Jesus' name that there will be such a release of your anointing over their lives today that they will run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint, that yes. they would mount up yes, on wings like eagles because they've been waiting upon the Lord. And so we pray, mm -hmm. let your let your kingdom come, Lord Jesus, and let your will be done in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, um, I pray. Amen. Yes, Father, in Jesus' name, we release right now. I, I want to pray for people's healing. I felt yeah. as possible yeah. maybe when praying that some people are watching, you are sick, you have pain in your back, mm. pain in your knee. Father, right now in the name yeah. of Jesus the Christ, we release right now your supernatural power. I yeah. release right now your supernatural healing upon the people yeah. watching in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, I thank you that in this time, yeah. your yeah. power will be shown in their homes, your power will be shown yeah. in their families, in their bank accounts, yeah. that the power yeah. of God will be present yeah. in the of God's yeah. life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, every church leader watching, every pastor watching that is stressed out about their churches, I pray right now, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, that there will be ideas like never before. Ideas, Amen. Yes. Amen. ideas for new members to come in, new leaders yes. to be raised in Jesus' yes. name. Father, we release yes. it. We release your anointing yes. for everybody uh -huh. watching. Uh -huh. Every uh -huh. church will grow. Yes. Every church will stand. Every business will stand. That there will be businesses that are the rest. There will be churches that are the rest. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, my God, that this crisis will bring out of us the best ever. Yes. The best yes. Of us. The yes. Best out of our finances. Yes. The best out of our businesses. Yes. The best yes. out of our bodies. In Jesus' yes. name, if you that person is clinging to your back, I release right now the healing power yes. of Jesus. That that Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name, the pain in yes. the kidney. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray right yes. now for everybody yes. that is connected to us right now. I pray for marriages. I pray for finances. I pray for people that are living right now, wondering if they need to be bold, if they need to keep their keep that heart for that wife. I pray for parents. I pray for the most of the people of their lives. I release the favor of God over everybody watching. May you receive open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Over their lives. Yes. Yes. Guys, thank, thank you, you so Jesus. much. For this. Thank and you, Jesus. Before we go, just a final word from you, Pastor Fabian and Nikki. Just a final word from them to, to the remnant. If you're watching, awesome. you guys that are watching, just put on the comments, hashtag remnant arise. Everybody just quickly, hashtag remnant arise. Pastor Fabian. Awesome. Hey, just um, I just want to encourage everybody, keep your focus. Uh, fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. You know, in the midst of all of this, um, the word of the Lord still remains the same. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall remain standing forever. So in this season of our lives, it is important that we that we keep our focus. You steady your thoughts. You silence the voices. And number three, you make sure that you uh, you settle the fears in your heart and allow God to lead you right through it. God bless you. Awesome. Um, Nick. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Um, yes. I think it's it's such an honor to be with two massive giants in this generation. And um, I'm very excited to see what God is going to do with us. And I think it's time to get used to different. So yeah. let's everybody get used to different and adapt to the times, evolve with the times and reach people that we've never reached before, because now more than ever, they need us. They need Jesus. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor Fabian, Nikki. Thank you guys so much for connecting on this broadcast, for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. Next time, we need to go and drink a cup of coffee and do this in the flesh. You know Come what I'm on. saying? <laughs> we yeah, love you guys so, so much. Good. Thank you so much. <laughs> NJ, so good meeting you. Uh, nice to meet God you. bless you guys. Everything of the best. You guys, hey, bless you. Thank you, Pastor uh, JJ. See you. Yeah, to you guys that have watched us, thank you so much for watching us. 
see you guys. Pastor, Pastor Nikki, if you guys have any services over the weekend, Nikki and Fabian, just tell the people where they can watch you guys, etc. before we go. Yeah, um, I think we're on uh, Facebook Live. Um, we do our meeting, uh, our services at 10 o'clock uh, on a Sunday. Um, so uh, Planet Shakers Cape Town, Facebook, uh, Planet Shakers Cape Town, or Planet Shakers South Africa, sorry. I've just been told here by the guys around. It's Planet Shakers South Africa Facebook page. You can, uh, we, we do a live service at 10 o'clock. Nice. Awesome. Next. Um, I think for this weekend, I would like to direct people to Face TV at 5 p.m., uh, Channel 341. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a national day mm -hmm. of prayer with uh, my dad and my mom and Dr. Andre and Dr. Jenny. So if you're going to watch something, right. watch that and connect to your local church. Please support the local church as much as you guys can. That's right. Yes. Also, from awesome. our side, we have 10 o'clock Sunday morning, a service, and 5 o'clock, we all are connecting to the... To the, to the Pentecost live servers on Fight TV. Everybody watching, mm -hmm. thank you for watching. We love you. Let the remnant arise. Let the remnant arise. Be blessed. Jesus is life. Amen.